I'm good. I'm good. Let's pray. Lord, we, um, we just want to receive what you have for us today. So in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to open our hearts. Lord, to receive what you want to tell us. Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. I want you to move in, in, in this message. In, and I want this message to be your message, not my message. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, do what you want to do in our hearts today. Transform and change us. Renew our minds, Lord. We love your word. Lord, teach us what you want us to know. Grow us, Lord. We surrender. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in all of us as it is in heaven. In your church as it is in heaven. Oh, Lord, we give you glory and we praise you today for your wonderful and precious Amen. promises. And we say, in your name, Yeshua. Amen. We ask in your name. So today we are going to talk about God's amazing, wonderful promises. And they are really, really awesome. God's promises, God's promise for his people um, are so incredibly, incredibly enormous. And we need to know that his provision is in his promise to us. His provision for us as his people is in his promise. And this verse is such an, a powerful um, statement from God and it's exceptionally wonderful in this promise. And it's 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4. I love this. We're going we're gonna to go through, we're going to walk through this today. And um, anyway, I'll let it speak for itself. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value so that by them you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world because of disreputable desires and become sharers of his divine nature. That was in the Amplified. I love it. It does it justice. It really, really expands on this verse. So the first thing that we need to do is pay special attention to the two very important truths given to us in this verse. And it really expands on this because they are in perfect tense. In the Greek language, these truths are, are written in the expression of perfect tense. And perfect tense means that is, it is an action that is complete and finished or perfected. An action that is complete and finished and perfected. So when God says... In this verse, in verse 3, for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. And he goes on in verse 4 to make another, to say another truth. For by these he has bestowed on us precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value. God is not saying that he is going to give them to us. Yeah. God has given them to us. It's not a future tense. It's not a will be. It's not they are um, for us in, in, in some degree of the future. They're ours. They're ours right now. He makes that very powerful declaration that we have been given all that we will need through his precious and magnificent promises. Let me emphasize this that... Um, that God's provision has provided, his promises have provided every single thing that we need. And God's promise is our, as believers, it is our inheritance. And we're going to look at that as an example in the Old Testament. 
And the Old Testament, um, you've probably heard that the Old Testament's a New Testament concealed and, and the New Testament's the Old Testament revealed. It's just the promises in the Old Testament were manifest and, and, and now they have been delivered to us. All the promises that God had concealed in the Old Testament were made known to us. And these promises were revealed in Jesus. And these there's so many different stories in the Old Testament and they're all types and shadows. And people say, and I've heard it said often, that Jesus is, is on every page of the Bible. And I don't find that to be an accurate representation of God's word. I, I, I think it's more to the point that, that um, every page in the Bible points to Jesus. So the whole of the Old Testament is pointing to Jesus. And we can't gloss over the relevance of the Old Testament. And some people, um, some people don't want to um, don't want to get dive into the Old Testament and do the study of the Old Testament because they don't think it has relevance to us. But it does. It's extremely relevant when we look at the Old Testament through the lens of Jesus. There's all kinds of wealth in it and all kinds of knowledge. There's hidden gems. And so many wonderful, powerful teachings in it that are very relevant to our everyday life. But when we look at it through that lens of Jesus and the promises that have been revealed in it. So we're going to look at um, a person that's um, a great leader in the Old Testament and his name is Joshua. And, um, and Joshua was uh, uh, Moses' protege that led the children of Israel into the promised land. And in the New Testament, we have another prominent leader, and his name is Yeshua, which is exactly the same name as Joshua. Um, and, and their names, both of their names mean God is my salvation. So Jesus is, is Yeshua, if you don't know that. And Jesus is the fulfillment of all of God's promises for us. And Jesus makes... And Jesus makes um, the manifestation of God's promises, our inheritance. So just like Joshua led the people of Israel into the promised land, Jesus also leads us into God's promises, which are pre precious and magnificent promises. So today, looking at um, Joshua and Jesus as our example to navigate us into the land of promise that God has given to each and every one of us, because those promises are precious and they are our inheritance. Because God has given us all we need to meet every single one of our needs. All of God's promises are there to solve every single problem that we all have in our lives. And we already possess all of God's promises that give us a dynamic life of godliness. So today we're going to talk about how we claim that inheritance which is already ours. To claim that dynamic life that God has given us. So we look at God's promise to Joshua. And it holds very um, important keys uh, that God's given Joshua and to us to claim our inheritance. So we look at Joshua 1.8. So God is speaking to Joshua here. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will be successful. So God makes this amazing declaration to Joshua for you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. So God has given Joshua a promise of prosperity and success. So you might be saying um, that this is God's promise to Joshua. And yes, you are correct, but God is no respecter of persons. It's not about personality or status that impresses God. It is, his, um, it is our uh, heart of obedience to follow God and to be obedient to God's direction. 
That's what God, that's why, that's why all the promises that are made to people in the, in the Word of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament are ours. Not because of our status or our personality, because God is no respecter of persons. It's just our ability to adhere to God's direction. And all the promises that God gives to people in, throughout his word are ours. So let's look at the conditions and the keys that God gave Joshua to inherit the promise. And there's three keys in here. First, God says to Joshua, the book of, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Second, you shall read and meditate on it day and night. And third, you shall be careful to do everything in accordance to all that is written in it. So the three keys are mouth, meditate and do. Mouth, meditate and do. So God's telling us to think his word, speak his word and to act out his word. And God is telling us in order to activate that inheritance that he's already given us. These are three keys to us. Because we've got to remember that this inheritance is ours already. It's not something we're working for. It's the path that we just need to walk to claim what is already ours. To produce this prosperity and successfulness in our own lives. It's cause and effect. If we continually meditate on God's word, if we're continually speaking God's word out in faith, declaring God's word, God's word's coming out of our mouth and we're declaring it in faith. And if we're habitually walking and acting out his word, God's telling us that we will be prosperous and successful in the path that we walk. And the success and prosperity is also um, mirrored in Romans. And look, let's look at Romans 10.8. I love this verse. It's extremely important to all of us. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is God's requirement for all of us to be saved. And you'll notice there's, there's noticeable similitudes here for what God commanded Joshua. It's the same condition. The word in our heart, the word in our mouth, and the word of faith. This is our condition to walk in the inheritance. The same as Joshua. God said to think his word, to speak his word and to act out his word. And this activation, in, it, it, this, this, this activation um, of God's promises let, lets us lay hold of the promises and the inheritance. And I, I, I did some research. I didn't read them all. I actually Googled it. Um, and it tells me that there are 7,487 promises by God to mankind in the Bible. That's 7,487. That's a lot of promises. Why didn't you read them all? <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> it was just a lot to do with Monday. And God's promises are for life, they're for security, they're for wealth, they're for prosperity, they're for freedom, they're for love. God's promises are so many and so varied and they're for all of us. And they're all yours, they're all each one of yours. God is no respecter of persons, he's made all of these promises for us. They are our inheritance, they are your inheritance. And we just need to lay hold of that. This is one of God's greatest promises. 2 Corinthians 1.20 for, for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Yes and amen. They are ours. Yes and amen. They are for us. And none of these promises are earned. They are our inheritance given to us 
by Jesus. And that's why it says, for all the promises of God in him, in who? In Jesus. They are yes and they are amen. God is not withholding his promises from us. I love this verse in Luke 12. Jesus says, but seek the, ki but seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It gives God so much joy to give us the inheritance of his promises. God's not withholding them from us. God wants us to be blessed. It actually gives him joy. It makes his heart joyful. And when we are seeking the kingdom, when we're living in that place where we are seeking the kingdom, we're thinking his word, we're speaking his word, and we're acting out his word. When his word is the meditation of our hearts, it becomes a reality in our lives. When we're meditating continually on the word of God, his implanted word in our heart begins to grow and it grows out of our lives and then we start speaking his word out of our mouths because we're meditating on his word. It's growing, it's germinating, it's producing fruit and the fruit is coming out of our mouths. And when the confession of our faith has empowered us, then we start to speak that faith, his word with faith and we start walking out his word in obedience. It becomes an action in our lives where it's manifest, where we can't help but walk out his word because we're living it. And this is God's inheritance and assurance for us to, um, to, to receive his promises. It's keys for us for prosperity and success. And when we're walking in this truth and we understand this, this verse, 2 Peter for his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything. Absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness. Through, the tr through true personal knowledge of him who calls us by his own glory and excellence. For by these things, for by this for by these he has bestowed on us precious and magnificent promises of inexpressible value so that by them you may escape from the immoral freedom that is in the world because of disreputable desires and become sharers of his divine nature. We, we've got to know this. It's empowerment. It's empowering for our lives. And the more I the more I, I know him, the more I'm convinced, the more I'm convinced every day that in order to fulfill the destiny that he has for my life, it's got very little to do with me and my abilities. It's got everything to do with him. It's not about how wonderful or successful or great or strong or whatever. It's all to do with him. And it's all to do with laying hold of the promises that he's made for each one of us in his word. I love this. read this this morning, actually. God just highlighted it to me. Psalm 44, 1 to 6. We have heard with our ears, O oh God. Our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. In days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand. But them, the fathers, you implanted. You afflicted the people and cast them out, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. So the children of Israel did not gain the promised land by their own sword. Nor did their own arm save them. So the, the, the strength of the children of Israel did not bring them out of Egypt. 
It did not deliver them into the promised land, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favoured them. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Though you will push down our enemies, though you will though though your name through your name sorry, through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. For I for I will not trust in my bow, nor shall I nor shall my sword save me. For I will not trust in my bow, nor will my sword save me. It's his strength. He's the one that saves us. It's not our own strength. It wasn't Joshua's strength that delivered the children of Israel into the promised land. And it won't be us or our strength that takes this mountain for Jesus. It's not going to be us or our strength that does anything. It's our reliance on God and the inheritance of our promises, of his promises that will give us the victory, the promises that he made for us. And I need to tell you, church, that you are already victorious. I am already victorious. We've won the victory. It's ours. Ephesians 2.6 And raised us up together. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. He's won the victory. He has done it. It's our victory. We all need to walk in the land of his promise. When we're walking in relationship with Jesus, like it says in 2 Peter, through true and personal knowledge of him, when we're living that relationship in his word, and his word's the meditation of our heart, and his word then flows out of our mouth naturally, naturally, And our life and our actions reflect his word. Then our way becomes prosperous and successful. And I'm not telling you that you will just have this time um, that's easy and, and, and it's plain sailing. What I'm telling you is in times of difficulty, you can lay hold of his precious promises and they're yours. We all go through difficult times. This isn't a prosperity message where I'm just telling you that this, if you do X, Y, and Z, you won't have hard times. I promise you, you will have hard times because God promised, one of his promises, that you will have hard times. What I am saying is that when you go through these hard times with the meditation of his word in your heart, when you're speaking out his word, his promises in faith over the circumstances and the situations and you're walking and living out that word in your life, then you will have success and prosperity because you can see Joshua. He had a hard time. He didn't just walk into the promised land and everything was was beer and skittles. They had hard times, but God's promise was for them and God's promises are all of our inheritance. There is so many of them in the word of God. When you lay hold of them and understand that they are your inheritance, God's not a liar. God's not going to tell you that that something is yours and then withhold it from you. It's about taking it and knowing that it's your inheritance, that God has spoken it. And the only way that we're going to have victory over certain things in our lives is by knowing, like the song says, I know who you, I am who you say I am. I'm not who I say I am. I'm not who Ronnie says I am. I am who God says I am. And God says I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He speaks words over me that I can take and I can say they're my promises in the word of God. And, and we need to know that when we are taking them as our promises and believing them and speaking them out, then God activates something. There's an activation of faith. And I need to say this last verse. It's not by might. It's not by power. It is by His Spirit. 
It is not by might. It is not by power. It is by his spirit. That is how he will build his church here. That is how he will build our lives. The less that we think it has to do with us, and the more we put our trust and reliance upon him and his promises, the more we will walk in that, that land of his promise. Because his promises are our inheritance. Jesus has made the way for his promises to be our inheritance. Take them. Walk in them. They're yours. They're all yours. All we need to do is take hold of them. He's given them to us. So church, I want, um, I want us all to stand if we can, please. Lord, there is, there, is no, um, there is no message that I can preach. There is nothing that, no program that we can run in this place. Lord, there, there's no um, wisdom that I can bring, but it's all you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just want you to move in your church. We surrender and we want your promises for our lives and we ask you, Lord, we know that it's not by might, it's not by power, it's what, it's what you give us. So Lord, we need you so desperately. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to do what only you can do in our lives. Break the things off our lives that need to be broken, Lord God. Lord, grow us up in your strength, Holy Spirit. We need you. We need you to grow your church. We need you to take this mountain and we want the harvest, Holy Spirit. Only you can do it. Only you can do it in our lives. Only you can break the strongholds in our minds. Only you can renew our minds because we want the mind of Christ, Lord. Lord, only you, Lord God, can give us the faith to lay hold of your promises and make them our own. Lord, we want, we want yes. the grace, Lord God. Yes. We want the grace to live out and walk out in our land of promise, the promises that you have activated in our lives, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You've given them to us. Yes. They're our promises, Lord. And Lord, we lay hold of them by faith. And Lord, we want to walk in all of them, Lord. We don't want to live a partial life of freedom. We want all the promises, yes. Lord. We want, don't want to live a partial Christian life, Lord God, where your word is, is a byproduct, Lord. We ask you for the grace in each one of us to, Lord, live out your word. Implant it in our hearts, Lord God. Give us the grace, Lord God, to speak out your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, give us the grace and the strength to walk out your word. Lord, we pray this, Lord, and we know that without you, Holy Spirit, we're just striving. So Lord, activate this in our lives. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you in every part of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.